Hello and thank you for watching the second lesson of chapter 8, which is 8.2 IPv4 packet. As we learned in the previous lessons, the IPv4 is one of the primary network layer communication protocol, and the IPv4 header is used to actually help the packet move from the source towards the destination, so from the source to the next hop to the next hop to the destination. Now IPv4 packet has two parts, IPv4 header, which is this one on the top here, this is all this IPv4 header, and identifies the packet characteristics. And then, then we have the payload. Now payload has a segment information as well as the actual data. Now when we look at the IPv4 header, most of the students they go like, what the, I'm not gonna ever remember this stuff. But it's, it's easy stuff to remember. It's not hard at all. We just have to look at it. And kind of like we split it into small pieces. In small chunks, we can understand it. Anyway, we have to remember all these fields for the exam and in real life you have to remember. First we have a version. Now version will actually identify what version of IP is it. Is it IPv4, or IPv6? So it's 4-bit binary value. Since it's IPv4, we put 0, 1, 0, 0 and that will say that it's actually IPv4. If it was IPv6, this 0 would be in 1 there, so it would be 0, 1, 1. That's an IPv6. But since it's IPv4 that we're talking about, we're going to leave it there. So 0, 1, 0, 0. And the next field is internet header length. Now, internet header length explains how big is this header without the payload information. So just, just the header of the IPv4. And the next field that we have is a differentiated services. This field is also called a type of service, and it's used to determine the priority of each packet. So for example, we don't have the same priority for each packet. If there's a queue, we want to have some packets jump the queue and go out first, then other packets. For example, the voice packets, video packets, we want to put them on the front of the queue. And uh, for example, maybe torrent packets, we put them at the back of the queue. So that's the priority values. The next field is the total length. The total length identifies how big is the header, including the payload, so together with payload. So header length, it was just the header, but the total length is with the payload as well. The next three fields, I'm going to actually tell the, uh, explain them at the end. So identification flag and fragment offset, leave it for the end. Um, the field after that is time to live. Now time to live will actually limit the packet or the lifetime of the packet. How long can this packet be around? We don't want this packet to be just going around in the loop forever. So for example, Imagine that I have uh, four routers here. Um, the source device or source uh, or the, the start, the source of the communication will determine the time to live. Say I'll put 10 here as a time to live. When the packet goes to the next hop, the next hop device will actually reduce that value by one. So it will go time to live to nine. So at every hop, we reduce the value by one. So time to live eight here. And then here will be time to live um, seven. So when it reaches zero, time to live zero, that means that the packet somehow is caught in the loop and we'll discard that packet. So the lifetime of the packet will be set on the time to live. We can set up to 255. And then we have a protocol field. Now in the protocol field, we'll identify, for example, here, let's say this is a layer seven, six, five, and layer four, for example, this is your transport layer, yeah? At here on the protocol field, we can identify what transport layer is it. So in the protocol field, if I put, for example, a value of 17, we will know that that uh, transport layer protocol there is UDP. If I put the layer uh, value of 6, that says is a TCP, maybe value of 1, that says is ICMP, and so on. So on that field, we can identify what is the layer 4 information. And then we have a header checksum. Header checksum will identify, it will be used for error checking of the IP header. And then two most important information here we have is a source IP address and destination IP address. The both 32 bit, 32 zero zone ones, will identify who created this packet and where is the destination of the packet. So that's a source and destination IP address. The optional field or options field and padding, it is rarely used and is beyond the scope of this module. So the last thing that we have to cover is the fragments. So if you remember, our layer seven, six, and five is just data, right? 
So this is data. When we get to, this is uh, 7, 6, and 5. When we get to layer 4, layer 4 will take that data and it will segment it into smaller pieces. And that's, they are called segment. And that's the transport layer. At layer 3, if it takes that segment and it will have to split it into further, then it's called a fragment. So it takes that segment, it splits it into two. That's called a fragment. The reason it will have to do that, because if you have a, for example, MTU mismatch between the two interfaces. So one interface has 1500, for example, and this one has uh, MTU or maximum transmittable unit to 1000. So for that reason, now the router has to split the segments into smaller pieces. And the identification, for example, will identify the fragment of the original packet. And the flag will identify how packet is fragmented. And the fragment offset, it will be filled for uh, to be able to, re be, to be reconstructed at the destination, to be able to put together the way it was uh, fragmented. Okay, so not a lot, if, lot, very hard here. Quite a few fields on the IPv4 header. Um, lucky to know the IPv6 uh, is being reduced into uh, fewer fields. At least we don't have this fragments. There is IPv6, they don't do fragments. Okay, now limitation of IPv4. We have uh, three major limitation of three major issues with IPv4. And the first one is the biggest one, the IP address depletion. Because we have a 32 bit in IPv4, for example, 32, 32 bits, 32 zeros and ones, and that will just give us about 4 billion addresses. Now, you might think, okay, well, that 4 billion is a lot, but not really. In the networking, it's not because we have so many devices connected to the network, everybody needs an IP address, so many on, uh, always on devices. Um, there is no enough. <laughs> there is no enough IPv4 addresses, even though that we use in private and public. There is no enough, and these guys are control it. Yeah, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority I I A N A. They are in charge of them, and they're just saying that they have run it out. So they're in charge of domain names. They're in charge of numbers resources, and they have five regional registries, and um, one for uh, North America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Oceania one, and then one for Europe. And then we, they in charge of protocol assignments as well. Pretty much all the registries they have run out of IPv4. Uh, we might have some in Africa on African Network Information Center, but I think the rest are pretty much run out altogether. So we have to move, uh, we have to migrate uh, from IPv4 to IPv6. So that's why IPv6 is becoming now very, very popular. And then another problem that we have with IPv4 or issue is internet routing table. This internet routing table expansion, so more devices that connect into the internet, more bigger the routing table, more resources on the routers. And then lack, lack of end-to-end -end connectivity. Because like I said, the NAT, so say, say here you have a LAN, and in LAN you're using private IP addresses. So we have a private address, and these addresses will be translated, when they go to the wide area network, they will be translated to public. And um, this translation will be network address translation. So we translate it from private to public. And because the address is changing from one to another, that's why we have a lack of end-to-end -end connectivity. Thank you for watching lesson 8.2, IPv4 packet. This is of chapter eight, network layer. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And this has been Astrid Krasnici, bye-bye.